Hey there, my name's Neandra, I'm a Grandmaster slash Master Tier Support main, I once hit top 500, lost the next 3 games and never got back there again. I want to talk about Damage Boost, Healing and Mercy's Pistol. With other parts of her kit like Valkyrie and Res Weakened, it is so, so critical to be getting use out of Damage Boost now, otherwise you honestly might as well just play Moira and like, I'm not saying that to be mean. I want you to get super fast at swapping between Damage Boost and Healing like this. Often I'll switch to Damage Boost immediately after healing someone to full unless I suspect they're about to take a serious amount of damage. I'm gonna throw some facts at you. 1. Damage Boost gives you ult charge while your target lands their shots. You might be at a rank where you feel the DPS is kinda weak and be more inclined to use the pistol. I personally would still favour Damage Boost. If an ally needs healing, all you have to do is press a different button. If you've got the pistol out, you need to turn to that ally and swap to the staff. Granted, that might take only like an extra second, but Overwatch is an insanely fast paced game. 2. Your target gets ult quicker with damage boost and because of this you can be very tactical with it and you know have a specific ally in mind. If I suspect enemy Genji has ult and friendly Zenyatta doesn't, I'll try to attend to him as much as I can. I could pocket Symmetra at the start of defense, hell you may want to attend to characters who get ult slower than others like Zarya or Orisa. Basically the possibilities are endless. 3. Keeping heal mode on someone at full health does not give you additional ult charge. You might be thinking, Neandra, I'm at a rank where my allies take so much damage that I don't find time to use damage boost. This is perfectly fine because you're generating ult charge and contributing. It's when you're holding down mouse one on allies who are fully healed and hitting shots, which I do see time and time again in the VODs I've looked at, that you start to fall behind. I'm currently looking at the VOD of a bronze player and even at this rank there's still tons of moments where they could be using damage boost. I often use damage boost as the default setting for my staff, I will hold down mouse 2 and then press mouse 1 when needed. If you're not confident in doing that, here's some good damage boost scenarios. 1. At the start of defense, often one or two allies will push up past the choke near enemy spawn doors, they'll do some quick damage and then fall back. Basically, if I see you at the start of defense putting your spray down and not pushed up forward with Reinhardt, uh, I'm calling the cops. 2. During friendly Zenyatta's ultimate, outside of special circumstances there's no point in healing people who are already receiving 300 health per second. 3. When friendly Roadhog hooks someone, especially if it's another tank. 4. When an ally is hit by enemy Anna's biotic grenade, anti-heal lasts for 4 seconds, consider damage boosting an ally for 3 and then swap back when it finishes. 5. During almost any offensive friendly ultimate where your ally is still able to move around, like, I'll damage boost as much of Tactical Visor as I can. Sometimes I'll do it even if Soldier needs a tiny bit of healing. With ults like Deadeye and Rocket Barrage where my ally is very vulnerable, I'll flick damage boost or time it or maybe just heal all the way through. Lastly, when friendly D.Va is d so she can get back in her suit quicker, please pocket baby D.Va as much as the situation will allow, it is so appreciated. Every single ally is a good damage boost target, no matter who they're playing. Characters with auto aim are top tier targets, especially if you're worried about allies missing a lot. Moira, Symmetra, Winston, etc, they all go through D.Va's defense matrix and Genji's reflect. Mercy's pistol is affected by both, and so are many other allies. Even aggressive allies like Sombra, Tracer, Genji are fantastic targets, you just need to be careful with your positioning. My favourite and often default pick is Soldier76. He's got a great ult, great damage output and can heal himself if he's missing only like 20 HP. Here are some of my other favourite non-offensive hero picks. 1. Zarya. Either you're making up for her lack of charge or she's just fucking shredding everyone, her ult is also one of the best. 2. Your secondary healer. Mercy no longer has her reset button and can only bring back one person in a 30 second period. Valkyrie is a good defensive ult but many things go through it so if you're running Lucio or Zenyatta as well, you want them to have ult as soon as possible. 3. Winston. His default DPS is 60, the same rate as Mercy's heal which means she can totally negate his damage. Damage boost bypasses that and is especially effective when he hits multiple targets at once. And 4. Roadhog for reasons previously mentioned. There are times you may choose damage boost over healing. Here's some suggestions but obviously remember to be careful. 1. Look out for friendly attack animations that take a few seconds before dealing the damage. Examples include Roadhog's hook or Reinhardt's fire strike. Often I'll watch my ally, flick the damage boost and then go back to healing.
102. When there's one or two enemies trying to stall the objective, for example, you're in attack overtime, about to cap, and there's just one fucking Lucio skating around the payload. Your team needs him dead quickly before the rest of his teammates start funneling out from here. Three, I do it in a lot of 1v1s where the fight's already in my ally's favour. For example, friendly Winston is zapping enemy Genji, who's just kind of on his own. Moving on to Mercy's heal mode, it's pretty simple. You can output 60 health per second for an infinite amount of time. Friendly allies will often cry out upon taking damage. Hello. Make sure you aren't tuning this noise out. There's been so many times where I've heard it and spun around to heal someone who was positioned behind me. I really feel like I've stepped up my game since listening out for this. When multiple allies are injured, you may want to juggle your healing. Instead of getting someone to completely fall, get them to a safe range, then swap to another ally, repeat as necessary. Although you generally want to prioritise squishy characters, please make sure your tanks are getting just as much love. Occasionally, allies overextend and you're going to have to decide, do I try to save them or just kind of back off and let them die? Every situation is different and you've got to use your own judgement. Two techniques I use to decide are... 1. The amount of enemies near, around, or already attacking your ally. Mercy likely isn't going to outheal four enemies attacking your teammate, especially if they're squishy. And 2. Positioning of other allies and the number of escape routes. If you're diving forward to heal someone, you want to make sure you can actually get back out without dying. If your team's running a second healer, try to work together. If you've got ult and they don't, maybe allow them to do a bit more of the healing, especially in the downtime between fights. Obviously, you don't want an ally to die because of this, so what I personally do quite often is damage boost that hurt teammate while they're being healed. If they suddenly need more healing than what's currently being offered, I can just press mouse 1. Since Moira's healing is resourced based, you want to help her get the most of it. Remember that Mercy's beam is very bright and can give away your position. Most of the time, this isn't a big deal, but there have been moments where I hear certain ults like Riptire, aka the anti-Mercy missile, where I'll cut the beam and go hide in a corner. And last of all, let's talk pistol. I gotta be honest, don't use it very often because I love damage boost so much. Mercy appears to get 2% ult charge from one headshot and 1% ult charge from one body shot. That's actually really fucking good if you can hit repeatedly. I do like using the pistol for emergency ult charge, like I'll blind fire it towards a group of enemies at a choke point for example. When Mercy runs out of ammo, she can swap to her staff and wait a few seconds. If she changes back to the pistol, it will be full again. Because of this, unless there are no beam targets available, you generally don't want to see Mercy's reload animation. You should be using that time to attend to a teammate instead. I encourage players to take out the pistol when your beam's not attached to anyone and no ally is nearby. Mercy can still fly about as normal with it equipped. Don't let yourself be a free kill unless you need to die quickly and even then you may still be able to get some ult charge out of it. I generally do this while walking back from spawn until my team is in view. Spawn camping is super rare, but eh, you never know. When you damage someone in Overwatch who isn't then killed, chances are they'll be healed by enemy support who in return get ult charge. So if you're shooting enemies to build Valkyrie, then it's fine, it's likely an even trade, but be cautious of feeding with the pistol, especially when you're already in Valkyrie mode. I like using the pistol as cleanup or quickly destroying objects like Widow's Mine or a Junkrat Trap my ally may not have noticed. I like to aim for enemies at critical health, heavily focused elsewhere or have had their mobility taken away. You know, enemies that can't really fight back and aren't time consuming. I recommend this over attempting to independently take down fully health tanks and DPS unless you're confident you can do it quickly or don't really have a choice. Despite it being a meme, Mercy's pistol is legit pretty decent and she can actually hold up pretty well in a 1v1. You just really need to be conscious of everything else going on around you, like team state and time. And that's all from me. Thank you so much for watching episode 1. Join back in a few weeks and we'll look at the state of Mercy's resurrection.